Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So I'm going to have for joining in with the lesson number two as part of CLD's delivery um, courses of Arabic level one. Today, inshallah, we're going to go through um, Ismo Ishara, demonstrative, demonstrative nouns, which is Hana Dalika, Solar versus the lunar letters. We're going to talk about the joining Hamza, Hamza the Wasa, Hamza the Qata, and we're going to go through some examples from the Quran, and then we're going to talk about um, some question tags and a particle of, of inter, um, interrogation and answer. I will go through some examples from the actual book as well. So demonstrative pronoun are called uh, Ismu Ishara, okay? Ismu Ishara, demonstrative pronoun. Um, Ismu Ishara, lil qaribu, means basically that which is close to you. And that which is close to you, you say hadha. That which is far to you, lil ba'id, is basically the one that is far. So for example, if we see the example here, th that is a door. So we say that is a door. If it's close by, we say this. So this is a book, hadha kitabun, and this is lil qarib, and that is lil ba'id. So close and far. If it's close, we say this, and if it's far, we say that. Same in Arabic, uh, same in English, sorry. So this, hadha, that is thalika. There are feminine forms, which we'll look, inshallah, at later on. Um, like all pronouns, these are definite. So that's why I was saying that, inshallah, we look at it um, further on in the class. So if you remember last last lesson, we saw marfu'un, and I said that everything ends in a, a, a dhamma, and I said in one of the examples we had had that. So that is because it is definite and um, you know naturally then you have um these are masculine um and they are they they are masculine because the nouns are masculine so these nouns are masculine so because they are masculine we are using the pronoun which is masculine to match them there are feminine counterparts which we will learn later on uh Zalika and hada are pronounced as Dhalika and hadha. Basically, you are in, you are elongating it because of an alif that comes after it, but that's not written down. Okay, so that is your first lesson, and it is covered in Medina book number one, which I will point at um, after after we finish this lesson, inshallah, so that you know where to go for some extra practice, inshallah. Um, you have huruf al shamsiya and huruf al qamariya. So this is shamsiya and this is qamariya. What do I mean when I say shamsiya and qamariya? It's basically the sun letters and the moon letters. Now, the sun and moon letters both are prefixed with an al, which is a definite article. Okay, and in the moon letters you have collected words. Um, you know, hajjaka, wakaf, aqima. So there's lo lots of collected words in a statement that you can learn and um, usually people don't really know them and they just go with recognizing them in the way they are written and I will show you um, the trick as we go along um, how to how to distinguish between the letters of Shamsi and Qamariya the sun letters and the moon letters so Shamsiya means sun Qamariya means moon okay so you have all prefix to it and they, the articulation of solar letter involves the tip of the tongue, okay? And basically in the lunar letters, there, there's no involvement of your tongue. Uh, when al is prefixed to a noun beginning with a solar letter, it's assimilated to the solar letter. Basically it's merged, okay? You're merging it in. So if I give you an example here, ash-shamsu, ash-shamsu, you, you don't hear me say al-shamsu. When you hear, when I say al qamaru you you hear the al the l sound, okay al qamaru ash-shamsu. So I'm merging the a sound with the third letter, the letter after the the sheen. Okay, so if if we if we prefix any letter with a, a, alif lam, we are going to directly merge the alif with the sheen with the third letter. So that could be any letter. Inshallah, we look at some examples in the Medina book. So here we have, oh, we have some examples here, so we could just look at those here. Now, you have here an image in front of you with the moon and the sun letters to, in order to be able to distinguish the difference between the two. Um, so here you have al a al abu al abu and al babu al qamaru al famu al tajiru al shamsu ta jiru so here you have the ta and that small um, sign here which is the w sign so 
you can almost see it like a small W. Okay, that vowel here is called a shadda. And basically, whenever you see this on any letter, that means it is a sun letter. Okay, it's one of the sun letters because of the shadda. If you see no shadda on the letters, like in these, you, you see no W on them, that means that that is a um, letter of the moon. How do you distinguish? You've got to make sure they're prefixed with an alif lam al. And then you look at that sign in order to be able to distinguish between the moon and the sun letters. And that's a little trick that everybody uses in order to know the difference. So that is something that you can go through the book uh, in the book. And uh, let's look at the joining Hamza. OK, so Hamza to Wasa is basically um, part of the uh, prefixing of Al, Hamza to Wasa, and it uh, is um, basically not pronounced so you do not pronounce this letter so you have here al -baytu, okay so al -baytu, okay so it, that's all because that's a part of the alif lam um and it, if it's preceded by another word it's not it's not uh, pronounced so here we say al -baytu, why because it's stand it's, stand it's standing alone now when they what do they mean when they say preceded by another letter they mean when we put like a um, and a connection with it, a connecting word we put and we say so here we are putting a connector, that's what we call them in English connectors, so a connector when you put that like and, so you say you, you merge them even though you haven't got that merging sign which is that small w, you still would merge them so you'd say instead of say so this is what they basically mean you don't say you don't pronounce the wa and the alif and the lam all together you will omit the alif and then you'll say well directly hamza to wasal also appears um in in it also appears words without the al okay so it also appears in words without the al for example we can see here Bismillah. Okay, so here you have um, the alif, which is Hamza to Wasa. Okay, and that's in Arabic. And then you have Ismu, and then you say Isabnun, Isabnu Mariama, Ibnun. Okay, and here you, you, you know, it appears without being part of the al, which is the okay so al is translated as the the house and it may not be part of that but it'll still appear to signify alif as hamza to wasal look for one of the following three conditions how do you know when you are reading if it's hamza to wasal so it's without any uh, symbol it, should, it may be without that and without a hamza it's completely omitted in writing so you do not see if you see that alif is completely empty both alif and lam are not pronounced when a word starts with a solar letter so uh, you if it's a solar letter uh, we've seen that you don't pronounce alif lam so you say one najmo okay one najmo or an najmo okay one najmo and a najmo and the same with the uh, letters of moon if it's a vowel well, here this is a vowel which means and you just directly pronounce that uh, without saying wa al najmo. Okay, so you don't say wa and al together, same as what we've seen before. Um, and that's moon letters and sun letters and hamza wata, hamza wasa. Now we're going to go through hamza to qata, and basically qata means cutting or discontinuing or separating. Uh, it's opposed, it's as opposed, it's opposed to hamza to wasa, so it means something different. Hamza to Qatar is always pronounced. Okay, so it, is, it does the opposite function of Hamza to Wasa. So this one is pronounced and it's that's why we call it the cutting one. Um, it's pronounced regardless of its position in a sentence. It can be anywhere and you pronounce it. Um, okay, so uh, Hamza to Wasa, it, it mainly be in, in the beginning. Hamza to Qatar can be anywhere. Uh, in, in the sentence. Uh, it's usually written with the symbol of this symbol, which is called a hamza. And hamza can be on an alif as follows. It can be on the top, it can be at the on the bottom of the hamza. So here we have an example. So here you have qul, huwallahu. So here you have the hamza al-wasal. And then you have hamza al qata ahadun, ahad, ahad. Okay, obviously this is the ayah of Surah Iqlal, so we don't say ahadun, that's a mistake. Astaghfirullah, um, so, qul huwallahu ahada. 
and we make call call on the, on the last one if you know the Jubid, inshallah. So here ahead is the um, Hamza Tukata, and here is the Hamza Tukata. So this is basically the general meaning of the two. Okay. Uh, let's look at some examples in the Quran, alhamdulillah, we will um, inshallah take some examples and they have already put some signs here for you just to help you understand what is the difference. So if you see, see this, this is Hamza al-Wasal, alhamdul, okay, and um, most of the time it's not pronounced, but when it is at the beginning we do pronounce it, otherwise we will ignore it most of the time. Um, or we, or the no, we will, sorry, we'll put al on it. We will pronounce it as kamariya al, rather than our here with shadda on it, and alhamdu here, and then here you say al rahman. So here you have a shadda. Um, here you see the the sun symbol, which is the sun letters. And here you see the sign here that I was talking about, the small w. And then here you say adin, so I'm merging the alif here. So here I'm pronouncing it. So it's not that, sorry, I'm not pronouncing it. I am pronouncing it, but I'm saying, al, I'm pronouncing it with the alif, the lam. Alhamdu. Okay, and here, al rahman. I'm not pronouncing the lam here, but I'm pronouncing the lam here. Okay. And that's all to do with the sign here. And here you have a Hamza Tukota. Again, you see that it has a Hamza on it. It's a Hamza. These two examples have Hamza under it. Um, here you have an example where Hamza is at the top. So Hamza Tukota is the one that has Hamza on it. Hamza Tukwasal is that which has no symbol on it or it has this uh, sign here and it's not the sign of Dhamma which some people can get confused with so you see here it's looped up and then round okay and that once goes from the side and then it's, it, it just has one loop and it goes to the side it's more diagonal whereas this one is standing up on top so that's something to bear in mind that um, so you're not confused because they are similar but if you do take a closer look you would understand the difference between the two okay so here we have the moon letters so the, the you see the symbol of the moon so al because we're pronouncing al okay al okay and here al alamin al alamin and here al magubi al magubi so here the lam is kamaria so you have shamsia kamaria hamza tobasal hamza tuqata alhamdulillah so and here's the key so if you do get confused you can refer to the key here you then have uh, then in the um the lesson you have um two types of questions you can ask is man and what so uh mahada okay what is this or manhada who is who is he you do not just as in english say what is he okay because what is basically for those which are irrational things things that are non-living then you have akli which is aqalun and these are rational things that are used for living things, okay? Living things, they include humans, jinns, and angels. And these are non-living things that are used for uh, objects, animals, and plants. And we say, mahada, what is this? And for human beings and all living creatures today, we say, who is this? Okay, brilliant. So that's the usage of what and who, inshallah. We'll go through the uh, examples um, um in in the in the medina book so here you have had a baitun this is a house and then you have what we're going to look at now is a particle of interrog interrogation which is hamza to istifam and has hamza to istifam is this so you do not confuse it with hamza to kota hamza to kota is pronounced but anytime you place a hamza to istifam before um, a statement, it turns it into a question. So you say, Ahada Baitun, Hada Baitun, this is a house. And then by placing Hamza to Istifam or Haruf al Istifam, I'm saying, Ahada Baitun, is this a house? So by prefixing, you've turned it into a question. Used in the context, um, uh, Hamza to Istifam, okay, so used in this context, is, it is called Hamza to Istifam. There are two types of responses you can give. You can give no and yes, la, na'am, okay, and these are huruful jawabi, and these are basically are the, uh, the particles of answering, la and na'am. Okay, so we've already lit uh, Hamza to Istifam, ma, man, 
and ma. Okay, ma is mahada for objects. Man. Okay, man is man. Um, we look at here. Man is for people. Who? Okay, man hada. Okay, man hada and ma hada. Then we have our third lesson, which I'll come to next class, inshallah. I hope that everything so far was clear. Let's look through the Medina book. So from the Medina book, you can download this online, inshallah. If you do not know where to go, please do contact one of the CLD admins and they will direct you, inshallah. I will try and link the, the uh, web link to this video just so you can, inshallah, download it. So um, I've done so a one. OK, you could go through this page because it gives you um, lots of different vocabulary and it tells you um, everything like hada, mustard and hada, bait and hada, kolamun and hada, babun. And you could make do one thing I would recommend is keep a small notebook and convert it into your vocabulary book, which basically means any new word that you find in um, that you're not familiar with or you've not heard before, do put that in the vocabulary book and translate it into your native language, whether that's English, Urdu or any other language and just revise those words um, inshallah you'll be able to um, expand on that vocab which is really important once you come to speaking the language so here you have the question so mahada what is this and then it says hada baitun and then this answer here this question here ahada baitun is this a house so mahada remember we said ma is what okay we don't say mun because because we're talking about a house and a house is an object. We only say man hada if we're talking about humans or any living thing. Hada baitun, this is a house. So you, you ask the question, ma hada, what is this? This is a house, hada baitun. And then, a hada baitun, is this a house? And then, na'a, yes, hada baitun. So what you could, what, what, what I would like you to do is go through Medina book and translate these phrases and look at look look up any difficult words in the dictionary um, again i will try and link a um, a dictionary for you in the description box uh, if i do forget just please contact one of the admins and we will direct you they can be downloaded online inshallah there is an amazing website that can um, that has everything available there so here these are the phrases that you can go through and there there's an image there to help you so najmun is uh, you know a lot of people may not have heard Day, but you can easily understand what it means because it has an image that so Najmun or Najm is basically a star. Again, you have uh, Tamrinun, which is an exercise. So you have this exercise and you could answer this Mahada and it says, what is this? So you would answer Hada, okay, Miftahun. So this is a key. Mahada, Hada, Kitabun. This is a book. So I would like you to answer these. So these words um, you should have already in the previous page. So if you, this is why I said make a vocabulary book for yourselves, which will help you expand on that vocab and then help you answer some of the questions and that will um you know progress you in your learning again these are um, so now you could answer these questions and uh, you could say hada sorry for the first one hada what you, what will you say naam or la so remember naam means yes and la means no so you will say la hada masjidun okay and uh, yeah, so just answer some of these questions, go through um, all these, and then you could go to Tamreen Thalitha, uh, which is the third exercise. So it's basically it says, wa it's basically you read and write, okay? Um, so you could do this exercise, but the I'm using the Arabic version, but you do have um, those versions that have English at the back, and that can help you understand. So if you are new to Arabic, um, and you know it wouldn't make sense to you just to read the Arabic phrases. Do do download the Arabic um, the Medina book that has English key at the back to it. This is a purely Arabic one, and this is called excuse me Lugat al Arabiya. So this one Lugat al Arabiya is in Arabic. So basically, it's not suitable for you. you look for the English one. So here, look at this is interesting one. So here it says manhada. It's talking about people manhada. Okay, it's not saying um, ma. It's not saying mahada. So here you see it says mahada, hada kursiyun. Okay, mahada, hada miftahun. Okay, manhada. 
manhada. So his man is for who? So then you can go through that. That's all the way to page nine. Continue all the way to page. So um, here again, just practicing the la and the na'am statements. Mm, and then you have some more questions here. Um, what do we have here? Okay. So basically, again, you just read and write. So maha da ha da So they've given you the first one. Then um, you um, write them down. Okay. Hopefully that will help you um and then you answer these questions because they're giving you examples at the bottom and then you use them for these examples um here you have thalika so we already said thalika is that okay man hada wa man thalika so uh who is this and who is that so remember man is used for who ma thalika is what is that thalika hajr which is a stone okay um and then you could, you, you, because we have done them in the lesson, you could go through all the way to, let's see what else you can do. You could go all the way. So you could do up to two lessons. You can go all the way to page 20, I believe, because that's where you will see the Hurufu Shamsiya and Hurufu Qamariya. So here we are. Hurufu Shamsiya and Hurufu Qamariya start from here. And you could go all the way. This, this is Kalima Jadidun, Jadida. So basically, a jadid that means new, okay, so new words. So these are new words, so what you should do is write them down, write the meaning of them. Um, here is Khurufu Qamariya and Khurufu Shamsiya. It's giving you a long list of them, and, um, you know, just remember the pointers that I've given you already. Um, and this is the final exercise for um, lesson number three. So you could do lesson number one, two, and three in the Medina Arabic book. And then you'll come to Adams or Rabia, and we will inshallah do that for next class. So already what you would have done is, you know, covered three exercises or three lessons in the Arabic book. And we've only covered two, uh, one lesson, which is introductory. And we've covered the second lesson, which has covered the book of Medina book. And inshallah, we'll go on to do lesson number three. So um to her for watching i do hope that you find this lesson um helpful and beneficial uh, to continue attending the classes with our um teacher alim ashjad inshallah jazakallah khairan wa khudana alhamdulillah rabbil alamin assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh